محمد الهادي البشير قد جاءنا حق النذير بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين um, So our, um, our topic today is النصيحة Um, Nasiha, when I uh, when I started uh, Basira, I um, I wanted to call it uh, something to do with uh, Nasiha. Uh, nasiha means uh, wishing the best for others. So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said, "Adinu an nasihatu." He said that the essence of religion is nasiha, which means wishing the best for others. And he said it three times. He said it, ad-dinu an-nasihatu, ad-dinu an-nasihatu, ad-dinu an-nasihatu. And then the companions, they asked him, they said, to whom? They said, whom should we have nasiha for? Whom should we wish the best for? And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, lillah, for Allah, and for his messenger, and for his book, and for the leaders of the Muslims, and for the generality of the Muslims. Sometimes when we hear the word nasiha, it mean, we understand it to mean giving advice to other people um, and telling them something, telling them that you should do this and telling them that you shouldn't do this. But that wasn't the meaning of nasiha in this hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The scholars, they say, That nasiha means um, that uh, an nasiha means kiraatun khairi lil mansuhi lahu. It means that you wish the best, you wish good for the person who you do nasiha to. So nasiha doesn't. You don't have to say anything. The only thing that you need is you have sincere well wishing for the person who you have nasiha for. So the the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This was perhaps his central trait. This is, this is directly related to his function as the messenger of God, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Every single prophet and messenger who came before him, or at least a great many, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran that they said to their people, وَأَنَا لَكُمْ نَاصِحٌ أَمِينٌ So that... Uh, that they, they said to their people that uh, I am nasih to you, I wish the best for you, and I am I mean I am trustworthy. Mm-hmm. And كلهم جاءوا وقالوا أنا لكم ناصح أمين ويرتبط بال بوظيفتهم ارتباطا يعني وثيقا. So um, he, the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, he um, one of his companions. He used to teach. He used to teach his companions also to have نصيحة. One of his companions is uh, his name is Sayyidina Jarir ibn Abdullah al Bajali. He came to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He became Muslim, and the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam took and took a uh, a bay'ah from him, took a pledge from him. He said, "You." He said, "He he," uh, and he said that uh, Sayyidina Jarir. He said, "Qala bay'atu Rasul Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam ala iqam al-salati wa ita al-zakati wa nush li kulli Muslim." So Sayyidina Jirir, he said that I gave bay'ah to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know, I pledged to him that I will establish the prayer and I'll give zakat and I'll wish the best for every Muslim. Later on, after the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam passed away, somebody came to Sayyidina Jirir and he said that uh, that uh, the uh, so that um, Sayyidina Jarir went to buy a, a horse from somebody. He went to buy a horse from somebody and he said, that the man said that how much is, uh, he asked the man, how much will you sell your horse for? 
and the man said 300 dirhams. And Sayyidina Jarir, he said to the man that your horse is worth more than that. Will you sell it to me for 400 dirhams? He said, yes. He said, your horse is worth more than that. Will you sell it to me for 500 dirhams? He said, yes. He said, your horse is worth more than that. Will you sell it to me for 600, 700, 800 dirhams? Until he bought the horse from this other person for 800 dirhams. So he did the opposite of what we would expect. Normally we negotiate down, he negotiated up. And so he was asked about this later on. And he said that I gave, I, I, I gave, I gave a bay'ah to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that I would have, I would wish the best for every single believer. And so after the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam passed away, he, uh, he did, uh, uh, he, this was an expression of the bay'ah that he gave to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Um, um, so then the uh, then the, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam just before he uh, he passed away shortly before he passed away in his farewell sermon he said uh, he said to his companions he said that uh, you will be asked about me so these are his his he's giving a sermon. Um, he's going to pass away soon afterwards. He said, you will be asked about me. He says uh, that, he said, you will be asked about me. So what will you say about me? And they said, the companions, they said, they said, the companions, they said that we bear witness that you conveyed the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you had nasiha, you wished the best for all of us. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allahum mashhad, Allahum mashhad. He said, oh Allahum mashhad. Uh, he said, oh Allah, bear witness. Oh Allah, bear witness. Um, the Prophet, the scholar, so the entire mission of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was a mission of nasiha. Why did he call people to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala? Out of nasiha for them, because he wished the best for them. The, uh, he said, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that my example and your example, he said, he said that the example, he said that, إِنَّمَا مَثَلِي وَمَثَلُكُمْ كَرَجُلٍ إِسْتَوْقَدَ نَارًا He said that my example and your example is like a man who lit a fire. And then the moths, they started falling into the fire uh, because they thought that it was something... Um, attractive and they're going they're attracted towards the fire but when they fall into the fire they die and so the and and so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said he said that you are plunging into the fire rushing into the fire and i am holding you by your waist holes preventing you from falling into the fire so this was how the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam saw his mission he saw his mission as an expression of nasiha for other people now, so, the, the, so anything that we take from the Prophet وسلم, any example of his life, it's an expression of his nasiha. But how do we know? How do we know that the Prophet وسلم, he did everything out of nasiha for, uh, for, his, uh, for his followers? Um, so the scholars, they say, they, they, give, they give an example. They, they say that there are signs by which you can know that somebody who is giving, uh, who, is, uh, who is teaching other people, who is calling people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is doing it out of nasiha. لكن يوجد علامات يعني يمكن للناظر أن أن ينظر من خلالها فيستبين أنه يعني إنما دعا الناس إلى الله سبحانه وتعالى نصيحة لله وليس يعني لنفسه فقالوا يعني علامة الشيخ الناصح أن لا يكون حريصا على ما في أيدي الناس 
وأن يقرب إليه الفقراء والمساكين وأن يرفق في تعليمه وأن يتواضع لمن يعلمه يعلمهم ويعلمهم ما ينفعهم يعني أولا فأولا يعني هذا لا ما معنى ف uh, so the uh, so the they say that the, the sign that somebody has nasiha the sign that somebody who's teaching people um, religious knowledge has nasiha is that that person not be greedy for what's in the hands of people and that he draws the poor people close to him poor people and seemingly insignificant people close to him and that he's gentle in uh, in uh, in the way that he teaches other people and that he humbles himself to the people to those who he teaches and that he teaches people what benefits them rather than um, difficult and complex topics so if we so the ulama they say they apply this they say that this is this is these are signs that we can use to gauge whether somebody is doing something out of nasiha or the, or whether they have some kind of a selfish motive behind what they are doing so if we apply this to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, so we say we see that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was not avid for what was in the hands of other people. لم يكن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم حريصا على ما في على ما في أيدي الناس حاشاه صلى الله عليه وسلم. So the and there are so many examples of this. So when after the after Fath Mecca. When, the, when he had all of these spoils of war and he saw somebody, uh, one, of the, one of the Bedouins, looking at sheep and goats that lined uh, the fields all the way up till the horizon. And he looked at it and these were spoils of war that had come to the Prophet wasallam, And he looked at it with longing and the Prophet wasallam said, do you want it? Uh, is, are you, is this something that you are attracted to? And he said, yes. And so the Prophet ﷺ said, take it all. And he, the man took it and he went back to his people and he told everybody, become Muslim because Muhammad is somebody who gives and he, as though uh, he gives and he doesn't fear poverty. The Prophet ﷺ, he never kept anything for the next day. Everything that was in his house, he would give it away. The Prophet ﷺ, when he died, لما توفي رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم كان قد رهن درعه عند يهودي يعني على على يعني كمية من الشعير. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم when he passed away he 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 didn't have enough money to uh, feed his dependents and so he had mortgaged his armor uh, with a Jewish man in order to uh, get money to buy his people uh, buy his family uh, buy his family uh, uh, food to eat grain and and he was he was the most powerful person in all of Arabia he was the messenger of Allah he could have used all of these things for his personal benefit but he uh, he he chose uh, he 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 didn't gather he didn't use his position to gather money so this is a sign this is one sign that when he called people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he did it out of, uh, out of nasiha for them. He didn't do it out of a selfish motive to gather, gather things of the world. Another sign, they say, of somebody who's calling people sincerely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that you bring the poor people close to you, poor and insignificant people close to you. So uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he would, uh, little children, used to go to him and he used to give them his attention. Sayyidina Anas, Khadim Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa a little boy, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to give him attention. We saw last week uh, how the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to uh, show concern for the brother of Sayyidina Anas. And he said to him, Ya Aba Umair, ma fa'ala nughayr. And the, we saw how when he entered, the, when he entered Medina, um, a, a little servant girl went and took him by, the, uh, by, by, by his uh, upper garment and he turned at her and he smiled at her. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he would, there was a woman, there was a woman, كانت تقوم المسجد. She used to, uh, she used to um, sweep and clean the masjid. And then he asked about her. He said, where is she? And they said that she died. He said, why didn't you tell me about her? 
that she died. He said, tell me, tell me, tell me her, tell me where her grave is. And he went and he made dua for her. So when somebody calls people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the sake, sincerely for their sake, a sign of that is that they don't restrict themselves to a closed circle of highly influential and wealthy people. But they, but they spend time with the poor and insignificant people. Um, and this is a sign that, that somebody is calling people for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we find that in the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Another sign is that somebody who calls people to Allah for this, uh, for sincerely for their sake is that he's gentle to them. He's not rough and he's not gruff. He doesn't look down upon them. He doesn't scold them. He doesn't, uh, but he speaks to them gently. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he uh, heard Sidi Abu Munir mention this once. Uh, he, the, he, he had Al Fadl ibn, ibn Abbas behind him, uh, the cousin of the Prophet, وسلم, and he was looking at a woman and he was not permitted to look at her. And the Prophet وسلم, took his face and he turned it to the side. He didn't scold him in public, he did it again. He again took his face and gently turned it to the side. And we all know about the hadith of the Bedouin. So when somebody is, is using religion selfishly, they don't behave like this. They're not, they're not gentle with other people, but they're using their religion in order, to, uh, in order to put themselves up over other people. And we don't find that with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was humble to, peop to, to people who he would, uh, who he would teach. Um, the companions, they could go to him and they could, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu when he would sit with his companions and uh, a stranger would come, he wouldn't be able to tell which one is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from everybody who was sitting because he sat and he dressed just like everybody else. And finally, he spent his life teaching people that which benefits them. So, uh, so this trait of Nasiha is a central, uh, central trait of, uh, of prophecy. And, uh, and, uh, it, and this is why the companions, they love the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this is why they were inspired by him. And this is why they were drawn to him. Alayhi salatu wasalam. Anybody have any? Adakum Shay Siri? Tuhani Fulani? MashaAllah. MashaAllah. Anybody have any questions? بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم على سيدنا ومولانا محمد سيد الأولين والآخرين وحبيب رب العالمين اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا ولا فهم لنا إلا ما فهمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم يعني كأن باعث النصيحة فيما ذكرتم هو الشفقة على عباد الله والشفقة على النفس كأن النصيحة باعثها الشفقة على خلق الله ومن جملتها الشفقة على نفس الإنسان نفسه في أن يكون مؤتمرا بأمر الله تعالى منتهيا بنهيه شفقة على نفسه وشفقة على غيره بالنصح بالأمر والنهي إلى ما تفضلتم به كأن بعثها الشفقة أليس كذلك؟ كيف الشفقة على النفس دي؟ على على بأن تحملها بأن تحملها على اتباع الأوامر حتى تنجو من عذاب الله نعم يعني ينصح لنفسه طبعا نعم و يعني عند بعض اهل الله انها اقرب المجاورين لك ان النفس نفسك اقرب المجاورين لك فان تبدا بها نصحا وشفقه عليها امتثال امر وانتهاء والانتهاء عن منهي عنه فاولى بك فاولى 
أولى لك فأولى أن تنصح نفسك When you said that, that uh, the origin from which have wishing well for others stems is compassion for other people and compassion for oneself. So that is the, the thing that drives one to wish the best for other people. So I asked, I said that compassion for other people, it's, we can understand. But what about compassion for ourselves? What does it mean that, that, uh, that nasiha comes from having compassion for ourselves? He said that the, the, our self is the, 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 the scholar, the people of Allah, they say, is our closest, um, closest neighbor. Our self is our closest neighbor. And so when we have, uh, when we, 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 when we, we have compassion for ourselves, then we, uh, we want to save ourselves from, uh, from the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so the first, when we call other people, before we call other people, we call ourselves out of compassion for ourselves and out of wishing the best for ourselves. احسان على كل شيء حتى على نفسك فاحملها بالاحسان على طاعه الله سبحانه وتعالى كما كان يقول سيدنا الهاشمي الله يرحمه ورحمه الله عليه سبحان الله الهاشمي مدرسه يعني ما الا وان ناتي على ذكره في كل يعني مجلس ماذا كان يقول So I, I asked him, I said that, what about uh, being rough and gruff with ourselves and, uh, and uh, forcing ourselves to do, uh, to, um, uh, to do unpleasant things and putting ourselves down? Um, and uh, is that something that, uh, how does that, is that does that conflict with, with uh, having compassion for ourselves? And he said, Uh, yes, it does. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prescribed that we do everything with ihsan, that we do everything with excellence. And this includes in the way that we treat ourselves. And so this is what Sayyidina al-Hashimi used to say. And he is a, uh, he is a, um, um, a complete school himself. And anything that you mention, there's something that you'll find from him uh, on that topic. فكان يقول في في النفس يعني أن لا تباشرها بالمحاربة بل سايسها وطالبها وقل لها أعطيك ما تريدين من ما سمح الشرع به لكن بأن تفعلي كذا وكذا وكذا من الأوامر فأنا لا أمنعك مطلبا تطلبيه لكن أن تعطيني من نفسك أمرا قصرت به مثلا لو طلبت شيئا ما من المباحات ففي مذهب في المجاهدات أنه يمنعها حتى من المباحات مذهب الهاشمي كان لا قال عدها بأنك تعطيها هذا إذا قامت بأمر تطلبه أنت منها فمثلا لو كانت مثلا تترك التهجد مثلا وطلبت مباحا قل نعم أنا أعطيك هذا المباح لكن بشرط أن تقومي في للتهجد مثلا وهكذا So there is a uh, there's a school of thought 
that uh, is uh, that says that one needs to wage war against that we need to wage war against ourselves against and so he said that this was not this is a school of thought but it wasn't the uh, the the school of thought of Sheikh Al Hashimi he said that don't wage war against yourself but use diplomacy with it and say to yourself and so give it something that is permissible and then uh, seek from it what you want so some there's there's a way there's an approach uh, to disciplining the soul which is that you prevent yourself from all permissible things but that wasn't the approach of Sheikh al-Hashimi so you said that you he would say for example the 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 nafs would desire something that's permissible and he would say yes I'll give it to you but on condition that for example you wake up at night and you pray uh, tahajjud at night and so uh, and so then then you get the nafs to pray tahajjud and then you reward it with uh, something that is uh, uh, that is uh, uh, that is uh, uh, permissible and that it enjoys. نقلوا عن بعض الأولياء أنها نفسه طلبت منه الخيار. فقال ثلاثين سنة وأنا أمنعها من ذلك. ثم قالت له طيب بس خليني أشم رائحته فقط. <تصفيق> هذا يعني كانت سياسة سيدنا الهاشمي يعني لون من لون آخر في المجاهدة أعطيك ما تريدي لكن أن تعطيني من منك ما أريد ما يريد الشرع الشريف منك منك. Some of the righteous people, it's related from them that they forbade themselves, uh, forbade themselves for from eating cucumbers. For 20 years, and then the nafs insisted and said, "Let me smell it. At least let me smell it." And he refused to let his nafs even smell the cucumber. He said that this was not the approach of, of uh, Sheikh Al Hashimi, but he would uh, he would uh, he would say that give to me. Uh, he would say, "Go ahead, have the cucumber, but on condition that you give me what I'm asking for," and that is something to do with a perfection of the Sharia. Something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks us to do. فهل تري احتقار النفس فيه يعني هذا يعني يخالف مذهبه يعني أن أن يحتقر شخص نفسه إلا إذا يعني ظهرت منها مخالفة فيؤنبها أو يوبخها أما مثلا يريد هو أن يأخذ بيدها إلى ربها فالطريق إلى الأخذ باليد لا يأتي إلا بالإحسان فأن يحسن إليها وبإحسانه إليها جبلت هي ما هكذا يقولون العبارة التي يقولونها القوم جبلت النفوس على حب من أحسن إليها فإذا أحبت يعني إذا أحسن إليها لكن لا يحسن إليها ويتركها هملا تمشي هي على عاتقها لا يحسن إليها ويطالبها وهذا منهج يعني منهج يعني الله أعلم يعني منهج نبوي يعني هذا هو يعني أقرب لل he said, I asked him, I said, what about having contempt for oneself? Um, is that, does that have a place in a spiritual discipline? And he said that if, if, we, if we do something wrong, then we scold ourselves and we take ourselves to task. Um, however, that's not the way that we take ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The way that we take ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is by being, wishing the best for ourselves and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, and treating ourselves well with ihsan, with excellence. Um, and they say that uh, there's a famous saying that hearts are inclined to love 
um, those who are kind to them. And so if we are kind to ourselves, then our um, selves will be inclined to, uh, and that's the way it inclines to us, and that's the way, and, the, and when we tell ourselves to go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then they will. Um, so that's the way to take anybody to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, and uh, he said that doesn't mean that you give your yourself everything that it wants and you leave it to do whatever it wants. That's not the intention. But the intention is that you give your nafs what it wants and then you seek from it something that uh, that uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants. And so you use the the kindness and excellence towards it as a means to draw it towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وهذا كان مذهب سيدنا أبو الحسن رضي الله عنه الشاذلي عندما يعني نصح بشرب الماء المبرد يعني في أيام الحر قال حتى يكون الشكر نابعا من كل ذرة من ذرات الجسد بينما المذهب الآخر يشربون مثلا الماء الحار في في الوقت في في الصيف مثلا مجاهدة لنفوسهم بينما سيدي ابو الحسن لان طريقته رضي الله عنه سميت بطريقة الشكر قال انا انصح اخواني بان يشربوا الماء المبرد هذا من التنعم ومن اعطاء النفس يعني احسانا للنفس لكن قال ماذا يريد منها أن تشكر المولى سبحانه وتعالى على هذه النعمة So um, he said that this is a uh, prophetic way and it's also the way of Sayyidina Abu Hassan al-Shadiri who he would say that uh, that I uh, like to drink he would prefer to drink cold water on a hot day to drinking hot water on a hot day the approach of others who uh, other scholars who sought to discipline themselves would be to make them impose upon themselves and drink and the unpleasantness of drinking hot water on a hot day in order to discipline the self until fight against it until it gives up he said that the way of Sayyidina Abul Hassan was he said that he would he would allow he would give himself cold water in other words some of the enjoyment of the dunya something that tastes well something that uh, uh something that is that one enjoys and he would give it to uh, to himself he said and then seek something from it and he said that he would do this so that he would his nafs would be grateful to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he would be he would be more more able to be grateful to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if he drank cold water then he would if he drank hot water so giving it cold water was a means for him to draw from his from himself uh, gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. بعض العلماء لا يرغبون هذا جلد بسموه جلد النفس ان تجلدها يعني انت حامل العصا وكلما رفعت راسها ضربت كلما رفعت راسها ضربتها لا يريدون منك ان تاخذ بيدها يعني احسانا And some of the scholars, they don't like uh, a group of scholars, and this is uh, the way that he prefers. He says they don't they don't like the approach of beating beating uh, the self, beating the nafs. That whenever it uh, appears, you hit it on the head until it goes. Uh, whenever it wants something, you hit it on the head. It wants something, you hit it on the head. He said that if you behave like that to anyone with anyone. You won't be able to take them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just as you take other people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by being kind to them and drawing them to you, you take your nafs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also by drawing it to you and being being kind to it and drawing it to you. قالوا أن النفس يعني أضر من سبعين شيطان فأنت كلما يعني أتخذت هذا المنهج في قمعها و فهي تلتف عليك وتسرقك من 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 مكان اخر وانت تصبح دائما في هذا الصراع 
هنا وهناك تدفعها من هنا تأتي من هنا تدفعها من هنا تأتي من هنا أما إذا يعني على مذهب الهاشمي رضي الله عنه ومذهب سيدي أبو الحسن إذا أعطيتها وطالبتها أو طالبتها وأعطيتها مقابل أدائها ما تطلبها منها ما تطلبه منها فهذا يكون يعني كفاك الله العدو They say that uh, the nafs is, uh, is more harmful than 70 uh, shaytans. He said, so if you try to fight it and you, you hit it from here and you come from there, its head will pop up from somewhere else and you'll tire yourself. But if you, uh, but if you, uh, but if you use the other approach, you, you, uh, you uh, give it something and then you seek something from it. or you reward it, you seek something from it, and then when it does it, you reward it by giving something to it, then he said it will come to you happily, and you will be, uh, you will be uh, suffice the fatigue of a long battle. عندنا أكلة حلوة في الشام يقال لها كول وشكور حقيقة يعني كلمة جميلة جدا اسمها الحلوى كل وشكور يعرفونها أهل الشام يعني حلوى محشية بالفستق, بالفستق الحلبي وكذا وكذا حقيقة أن هكذا إذا يعني فعلت شيئا أو أردت منها شيئا وحمدتها وحمد وحملتها على حمد الله تعالى ربما تشجعها في ذلك سمعت حكمة من قريب من يعني من زمن قريب قالوا ثلاثة أحواض زراعة ثلاثة أحواض للزراعة نحن نقول عندها عندها عندنا مسكبة يعني هي مكان للزراعة ثلاثة أحواض ثلاثة مساكب فزرعوها و تركوا مسكب من المساكب هذه حوض من الأحواض تركوه من غير أن يوجهوا له شيئا المسكب الثانية قالوا يخاطبون الزرع ويخاطبون الأرض باللوم والانتقاد وال التحطيم وكذا 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 والمسكبة الثالثة بالثناء ما شاء الله الزرع جيد ما شاء الله ويسمعون النبات والأرض الكلام الجيد قالوا الأولى بقيت كما هي لا كان زرعها إنتاجه جيد ولا أنه ليس جيدا الثاني كان زرع الزرع فيها يعني سيئا ونتاجه سيء والثالث كان نتاجه كثير وطيب فهذا في الزراعة وهذه دراسة حقيقية يعني عندما وجهت هذه اللوم على هذه الأرض وعلى هذا الزرع تعبت ولم تنتج وعندما وجه الثناء على نفس الأرض نفس الأرض نفس الماء نفس التراب نفس لكن هذا يعني التحفيز يعني أعطى ثماره أعطى نتاجه فقلت هذه حكمة بالغة He said that they have a, there's a dessert in, uh, in uh, Syria. It's called eat and give, eat and give thanks. So like you have donuts and, uh, and uh, uh, pastries. So there's a certain kind of uh, dessert in, uh, in the lands of Sham. It's called eat and, um, eat and give thanks, eat and be grateful. That's the name of the dessert. 
and uh, he said that this is um, a an excellent uh, an excellent uh, 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 an excellent name, and it reflects the spirit of what he is saying. He said that they did a they did a study. So this is a scientific study that was done. They took three um, plots of land, and they and they planted uh, they planted uh, the plots of land. They had uh, they had uh, um, vegetation or plants on them. And so they, on one, one plot of land, the plants, they left them as they were. And another plot of land, somebody went every day and scolded the plants and told the plants that you're like this and you're bad and you're terrible and you don't grow enough and you're this and you're that. And the third plot of land, every day, somebody went and praised the plants. And so after a period of time, they looked, they compared, and the, the plot of land that had, uh, where nobody did anything, stayed at the way that it was. And the plot of land where they scolded the plants and put them down, it, uh, the, uh, the, the plants, they became, they withered, they began to wither. And the plot of land where they praised the plants, they flowered and they flourished. So he said that if this is the case with plants, how should it be with human beings and how should it be for, our, for ourselves? وهذا في المذهب النبوي وفي المنهج النبوي هذا موجود يعني عندما كان يعطي رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم كل أحد من بعض من الصحابة صفة ما فهذا تشجيع فمثلا أعطى سيدنا أبو بكر قال لو وزن إيمان الأمة وإيمان أبو بكر لرجح إيمان أبو بكر وقال لو كان نبيا بعدي لكان الفاروق عمر وفي الحياة سيدنا عثمان وفي الشجاعة سيدنا علي وفي لسيدنا خالد سيف الله المسلول وأفرضكم معاذ أو أقرأكم أبي وهكذا يعني هذا كله يعطي يعني الهمة يعني وهذا كله داخل في النصيحة لأنه تعهد تعهد من يعني ترشده تتعهده شوف عندما قال يا معاذ إني لا أحبك شوف على التعهد من النصيحة إني لا أحبك لا تدعنا دبر كل كل صلاة سبحان الله الله لا تدعنا كل كل دور صلاة اللهم أعني على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك شوف كيف النصيحة يعني كيف مدخله صلى الله عليه وسلم عليها يعني بدأه إني لا أحبك هذه فتحت القلب للسماع وفتحت الأذن للاستقبال فتدخل النصيحة في في هذا المجال مباشرة إلى القلب the Prophet وسلم, he used to praise his companions, he used to compliment them. And he would give a different kind of compliment to uh, each companion in order to encourage him. So he said about Sayyidina Abu Bakr that if the Iman of Abu Bakr was, weigh, was weighed against the Iman of the rest of the Ummah, <coughs> then the Iman of Abu Bakr would, be, would uh, outweigh the Iman of everybody else. He said that if there was any Prophet after me, it would be Umar. And in bravery, he pra- pra- praised Sayyidina Ali. In, uh, in, the, in knowledge of inheritance, he praised Sayyidina Zaid. In, uh, in, mod- in uh, 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 shame, in praiseworthy shame, he praised Sayyidina Uthman. And so he, he did these things because when the companions, they heard, he said about Sayyidina Khalid bin Walid that he is the uh, sword of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He did this. He he gave these compliments because when when you when you give these compliments and it encourages 
the, comp the person who is complimented to, and it opens their heart to come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is how he did nasiha. This is how he helped people and called them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by, by, uh, by being kind to them, by being nice to them. And that opened their hearts. And then they responded. And he said, he, there's a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He went to say the Mu'adh ibn Jabal. And he said to him, he said, O oh, Mu'adh, verily I love you. And so say after every prayer, Allahumma a'inni ala zikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik. O oh, Allah, help me to remember you, to be grateful to you, and to worship you beautifully. Um, and so he said that when, when, when the Prophet sallallahu went to Sayyidina Mu'adh and said to him, I love you, then this opened his heart to receive something from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and rush to it with eagerness. And so, and, and this is the method of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and having, and this is why what uh, Sayyidina Munir was, trying, was saying earlier that the basis of nasiha is having compassion for other people and having compassion for ourselves. ولفت نظري في ما تفضلت به في وكأني أول مرة أسمع هذا هذه الرواية عندما قلت ما قلت عنه صلى الله عليه وسلم ماذا تقولون عني إذا ماذا تقولون عني؟ ربما وأنتم تسألون عني فما أنتم قائلون فما أنتم قائلون فكل إذا كان رسول الله المعصوم الموحى إليه تسألون عني فماذا تقولون فكل من تولى أمرا من أمور الدنيا والدين يلزمه أن يكون هذا نصب عينيه ماذا تقولون عني said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said to his companions, said to his companions uh, before in his farewell sermon, he said, um, you will be asked about me, so what will you say about me? And the companions, they said that we will, uh, we will uh, say that you delivered and you were sincere towards us and you wish the best for us. When you said that if the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is concerned about what his companions say about him, he said that everyone who is who uh, who takes any kind of religious position should be the same. They should be should be concerned that the people around them they will say these kinds of things about them. This is um, part of having the siha for them. ماذا تقولون عني لو كنت أبا؟ ماذا تقولون عني لو كنت معلما؟ ماذا تقولون تقولون عني لو كنت صاحب معمل مصنع ماذا تقولون عني لو كنت ولي أمر ماذا تقولون فهذه يعني والله حقيقة وكأني أول مرة أسمعها تلزمنا جميعا في جميع أمور في جميع شؤوننا وحياتنا he said that it's as though he's hearing it for the first time in that he there's a, a that uh, the meaning registers with him. So he said that if we're parents, we should ask ourselves uh, regarding our children, what will our children say about us? If we are uh, teachers, we should ask ourselves about our students, what will our students say about us? If we are managers at work, we should ask ourselves, what will the people who are managing say about us? If we are rulers then we should ask ourselves, what will the people who we've been placed over say about us? And so if the Prophet Sallallahu uh, Alaihi Wasallam, who is a prophet, is saying this, and he's protected from error and sin, then uh, it's, uh, it's an indication to us that, uh, that, uh, that we should, uh, it's something that we should be concerned about. It was a from Sheikh Abdul Rahman and Sayyidina Al-Hashim. هذا محلها يقول كان الهاشمي يقول النصيحة لا يقبلها إلا ولي 
ولا يرفضها إلا والعياذ بالله يعني شيطان that uh, that uh, Sayyidina al-Hashimi used to say that uh, nasiha, sincere advice, nobody accepts it except somebody who is a wali, who is close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And nobody rejects it except somebody who is a devil, who is a shaitan. And nasiha to... والنصيحة إما أن تكون في محلها أو تكون هكذا يقول الهاشمي ربما تكون أنت تحتاج إليها هذه النصيحة وأنت يعني يعني لو قيل لك لما فعلت كذا أو لما فعلت كذا أو أنت ربما تكون تفعل هذا فتأتي هذه النصيحة فتأخذها وربما تكون أنت لست قد وقعت بهذا النصح الذي تذرت منه أو نصحت به فقال يجب عليك أن تقبلها على الجهتين على الجهة الأولى تأخذها وتعمل بها لأنك محتاج إليها وعلى ال 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 إذا كنت لم تقع بها ووجهت إليك قال أن تأخذها للمستقبل أن تحذر من أن تقع بها مستقبلا فهي واجبة أخذها على الحالتين He said that if somebody comes and gives us nasiha then there is two possibilities either uh, they give us nasiha they advise us regarding something that is genuinely uh, a fault within us and if that's the case then we accept their nasiha by uh, by changing the fault that's within us or they point out a fault that we don't have and in this case we accept it by uh, accept by realize by accepting that it's a fault and resolving to never um, to not fall into it into the future so if somebody comes and um, and alerts us to some kind of a fault, then whether it's within whether it's within us or whether it's not within us, we should be able to uh, we can accept it in both in both cases. فلا تترك النصيحة ولو كانت يعني في في ما يظهر أنك لست متلبسا لضدها فلا تترك إما تأخذها ل تنتفع منها الآن وإما إن لم تكن فيك تحذر من أن تقع بها بالمستقبل. So 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 one should accept nasiha in both situations if it's something that is uh, is uh, is uh, is uh, it's a fault that's within us then we change and if it's a fault that we don't have then we resolve to change in the future. You should so answer it. So there's a question. Assalamu alaikum. Alhamdulillah, the topic from last week and, te- and the teaching was, was beneficial for me. Jazakallah wa khairan. Allah SWT reward you. Uh, that said, in addition to being cheerful and magnanimous most of the time, does our religion teach us that when, when and how to seek revenge and secure justice, honor, dignity that has been taken from us, the weak, the naive, etc.? by the powerful, those with authority, by bullies, by the narcissistic, etc. Yujat Sa'il, or Sa'ila, Tas'al, Yusallim alaykum, Siri. Thumma, Taqool, Yani, Hada, Hadarat al-Dars al-Madi, Fi al-Usbu' al-Madi, Anil, Yani, Al-Mawdu' al-Ladhi, Tanawalnahu, Fa, Yaqool, Yani, Taqool, Istafadtu, uh, منه وجزاكم الله خيرا um, uh, لكن يقول يعني في معظم الأوقات نكون uh, عندنا طلاقة 
ونكون عندنا يعني نرحب بالآخرين لكن هل يعلمنا ديننا كيف متى وكيف يعني يعني نأخذ العدل من الظالم أو يوجد ظالم يعني ظلمنا و... ونحن ضعفاء ولم نكن عندنا علم و... يعني شعرنا بال... بالإهانة و... و... وال... والظالم هو عنده قوة فبغى علينا وعنده سلطة فهل هل يعني 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 كيف نطبق ما ما تعلمناه في في الأسبوع الماضي عن من طلاقة الوجه من ال يعني انتصار في مثل هذه المواضيع اليد تقيم الحد والقلب يرعى الود so that the hand um, hand um, establishes the uh, the punishment the hand punishes uh, but the heart uh, is careful to always have love ضربنا مثال في ذلك انه كان احد الشيوخ عنده مريض وكان هذا المريض قاضي فتوفي الشيخ وكان ابن الشيخ يعني يشرب الخمر فياتوا به الى القاضي تمسكه الشرطه وياتوا به الى القاضي ويقولون للقاضي أتينا بفلان يشرب الخمر فعندما يسمع فلان يعني ابن ابن شيخه يقوم من مجلسه ويستقبله على باب المحكمة ويقبل يده ويؤهل ويسهل به إلى أن يأتي به إلى كرسي الجلد ثم يقوم بجلده حد الخمر ثم يقبل يده ويقول له يا سيدي ابن سيدي يا سيدي ابن سيدي أنتم يعني لا يليق بكم هذا وكذا ويبدأ ينصحه فقيل له في ذلك قالوا أنت تقبل يده عندما يأتي وتجلده ثم تقبل يده وتقول له سيدي يا سيدي ابن سيدي شو هذا التناقض قال لا اليد تقيم الحد والقلب يرعى الود <تصفيق> كثيرا ما كان سيدنا الشيخ عبد الرحمن يذكر هذا he said that uh, Sheikh Abdul Rahman used to frequently mention a story of a uh, faith who had a student he had a murid and the student was a judge and uh, and so the the sheikh passed away his teacher passed away and he had a son The sheikh had a son, and the son was somebody who used to drink wine, and uh, and so the police or would would catch this person publicly drinking wine, and bring him to the judge, in order to be punished, and so uh, the judge, he would meet him at the door, he would welcome him, he would smile at him, he would kiss his hand, and bring him gently, and sit him down on the place where he would be punished. And then he would beat him uh, and give him the hard punishment of drinking wine, um, 40 lashes. Um, and then after he did that, he would kiss his hand and he would say, oh, uh, my master, the son of my master, uh, you know, this does, it doesn't befit you to drink wine. And, uh, and then he would take him out and then it would happen. This would happen repeatedly. And so the, uh, the, the, the people, they came to him and they said that, isn't it a contradiction that you, um, you um, give him the had punishment um, and then you call him my master, the son of my master. And he said, he said this line, which Sheikh Abdul Rahman used to mention frequently about, uh, about, this, uh, uh, about this. He used to say that the hand implements the punishment. But the heart makes sure to always have love. وهذه الدنيا فيها طبعا فيها يعني 
فيها ظلم فيها شيء من هذا لابد لابد وإلا أين لنبلوكم أنت تبتلي بالزوجة والزوجة تبتلي بك والابن يبتلى بأبيه والأب يبتلى بابنه وهكذا في على كل المستويات هذا يعني يقع الظلم يقع لكن إذا أردت أن تنصح له لا يتعارض هذا مع يعني حفظ الود لا يتعارض in this dunya there is oppression that happens in this dunya uh, between uh, oppression between parents and children uh, oppression between other people people of authority and people uh, under them said that this is something that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created and uh, uh, husband and wife. He said, because uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tries us and he tests us. He tests us with each other. He tests the husband with the wife and the wife with the husband and the children with the parents and the parents with the children and other people with other people. So he said, this, is, this, ha- this, is, this happens in this world. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates it. Um, but when it happens, then the uh, then having uh, wishing the best for that person uh, doesn't conflict with taking the means to stop the stop the oppression there uh, they go together قالوا ان الدنيا دار التواء لا دار استواء ودار اطراح لا دار اطراح He said that uh, this world is a place of uh, a place that of of being um, unsettled. It's not a place of being settled, and it's a place of difficulties, and it's not a place of pleasures. And it's better for us to be wronged. Than for us to be the person who is wronging. So if you are able to remove the oppression from you by, uh, by uh, through the way of excellence that he just described, then do that. And if you are unable to, then uh, remember the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that those who have patience will be given a reward by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is immeasurable and has no end that it's uncountable. And, so verses about patience, they presuppose oppression. They presuppose unkind treatment. Because how is it possible to be patient if there is no oppression and there is no unkind treatment? And so the tremendous reward that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given, has mentioned about those who have patience, it is only possible if there is oppression. And so the, the description that you've given, then we should, she said that we should, you should take it as a lesson that, uh, that you will never do this to anybody else. أنا أرى هنا سيدي أنه يحتاج كل منا يحتاج ورد في السنة المطهرة أنه لتحسين ظواهرنا وإزالة الخلل عن ظواهرنا ورد في السنة المطهرة أن يكون لنا مرآة ننظر ننظر إليها لنصلح خلل ظواهرنا أليس كذلك؟ نعم سيدي طيب 
كيف نظهر خلل بواطننا فإشارة من ذلك يلزمنا هذا جميعا وعلى جميع المستويات يلزمنا أن كما ورد أن المؤمن مرآة أخيه فلو كان هناك مرآة حقيقية لك لك لي ننظر إليها من خلال أخ لنا في الله لا استقامت والله تعالى أمورنا That uh, that uh, the the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he likened uh, believers to being mirrors of each other. How is a believer a mirror of another believer? Well, if you look at a mirror, you, the reason why you look at a mirror is because to you want there's some kind of outward blemish that you want to fix. You want to fix your hair. You want to fix your clothes. You want to make sure you look nice. So you look in the mirror to help you fix your outward blemish. Said, how do we fix our inward blemishes? Said, we fix our inward blemishes by having a uh, a brother, a sincere brother, who we go to, and uh, and we we go, go we go to them for advice, and when we go to them for advice, they are like our mirror. They help us, uh, they help us fix our inward blemishes. Fakir, يعني اجتهاد من من عبد الفقير أرى أنه لما تركنا هذه المرآة من أيدينا أو من استخدامها واستعمالها فضاعت البوصلة أما إذا كان هناك وهذا في السنة المطهرة أن يتخذ أخا له حتى يرى من خلاله العيوب وأن ينصح من خلال هذه المرآة من هذه من كون المؤمن مرآة أخيه فإن كان ما في له مرآة فقد هذا أما إذا كان له مرآة ولو كان على جلالة قدره يعني لو كان يعني صاحب قدر لو اتخذ مرآة ولو كانت أقل منه قدرا وهذا له أصل انظر إلى إشارة انظر إلى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أشرف الخلق وأكرم الخلق على الله الموحى إليه المعصوم كل ذلك معلوم أليس كذلك؟ طيب خير من أن يكون نبيا عبدا أو نبيا ملكا صحيح؟ ماذا كانت الإشارة من سيدنا جبريل أن اتضع فقال نبيا عبدا وقفت معي مع الشاهد نعم فكأنه أخذ سيدنا جبريل مرآة مرآة كأنه أخذ سيدنا جبريل من مرآة وسيدنا جبريل يعلم من هو رسول الله ويعلم قدر رسول الله ويعلم أنه أقرب الخلق إلى الله وأعظم الخلق عند الله لكن لم تترك هذه المرآة النصيحة وقدمت هذه يعني هذه وقفة وقفت عندها أنه رسول الله المعصوم المحى إليه أعظم خلق الله أشرف خلق الله يقول له سيدنا جبريل يعني يشير إليه أن اتضع عندما خير بنبيا بأن يكون نبيا ملكا أو نبيا عبدا أليس كذلك؟ فألا نحتاجه كلنا هذا؟ ألا نحتاج إلى مرآة ننظر من خلالها يعني نفوسنا وأعمالنا وكذا وكذا نحتاج he said, uh, he said that the reason why things go wrong 
uh, he says is such as the situation that situation is that the question is asking about is because we don't apply this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that everybody, no matter how high their rank, should always have a brother who is like a mirror to them, who helps them improve, who helps them see their faults, so that they look at themselves through the eyes of this other person, not only through their own eyes. He said that uh, Sheikh Abdul Rahman was like that, and the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was like that. And he mentioned an example. The Prophet Sayyidina Jibreel once came to him and gave him a choice between being a prophet who is a king or a prophet who is a slave. He said that Allah has given you a choice. And then the Prophet looked at him and Sayyidina Jibreel, he gestured to him. He, uh, he gestured to him, he indicated to him that he should humble himself. And so the Prophet chose to be a prophet who was a slave rather than a prophet who was a king. So the, the, the point to take away from here is that, that the Prophet wasallam, the best of creation, and Sayyidina Jibreel knows that he's the best of creation, that he's better than him. The Prophet wasallam, took Sayyidina Jibreel as a mirror, and he benefited from him. So he said that no matter how high somebody reaches, no matter what level somebody reaches, they always need to have someone who is their mirror, even if that person is below them in rank, as is the case with Sayyidina Jibreel and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was below him in rank and still he um, he took advice from him. Qul Sayyidina Umar radiyallahu anhu rahimallahu mar'an ahda ila ya'uyubihi Said Sayyidina Umar used to say, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on somebody who gives me the gift of my faults, of appraising me of the faults that I have in, within me. He looked at other people as mirrors. He encouraged the people around him to give him advice and, uh, and tell him his faults. لا تكبر الموضوع فوق ما يلزم ولا لا تظهره فيجب أن يكون المرآة في بعض السيارات بيقولوا بحطوا عليها مرآة بيقولوا يعني هذه تعطيك مسافة صحيحة في بعض المرآة تعطيك مسافة غير دقيقة فيجب أن يكون يعني الأخ لأخي أن يعطيه فعلا الواقع الأمر لا أن يكبر الأمر أكبر من ما من الحجم المطلوب ولا أن يلغيه فبكل الحالتين فيها إشكال أما أن يضع الـ 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 الأمر بـ 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 يعني بـ بـ بحجمه فيستفيد ومن ترك المرآة فإسمه على نفسه هو ترك المرآة لم يستعملها فكما أنك لو لم تستعمل المرآة الحسية الظاهرة كان هناك خلل في ظاهرك من لباس من ترتيب أمر من أمور ظاهرك كذلك عندما تتخلى عن مرآة لكشف عيوبك تكون قد أهملت هذا الأمر فأنت مسؤول اتخذ أخا بالله ولو كنت ولو كان أقل منك قدرا اتخذ أخا بالله He said that, that if we are mirrors to somebody else we should convey it accurately we shouldn't uh, we should convey the uh, the the problem the way that it is and not enlarge it uh, and so he said that there's some rear view mirrors in cars you look into them and they say that uh, they have a sign on them that objects are closer than they appear so he said that we shouldn't be like that <laughs> we should convey it accurately to other people and uh, he said that that and everybody and everybody should have a uh, should have a a brother who helps them see their faults 
and when they don't then just as as when somebody doesn't have a mirror to um to see their outward faults they will their hair won't be combed their blood their clothes will have stains on them similarly if somebody doesn't have a brother that they 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 will have um, inward faults that will uh, that will show خرجنا عن موضوع السؤال نحن في لا سيدي في 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 الموضوع تماما ان شاء الله اخر سؤال سيدي يقول يسال السائل last question he said last week you spoke of the sunnah of smiling i might smile at a friend because i'm happy to see them but i would also like my intention to be to follow the sunnah however i may forget to make this intention how can i get better at remembering to have this intention is it a matter of practice يقول في الاسبوع الماضي تعلمنا سنة الابتسام وقد ابتسم الى صديقي لانني فرحت برؤيته ولكن احب ان ان انوي ايضا ان ان اتباع السنه لكن قد اغفل عن هذه النيه فكيف كيف كيف يعني اتحسن في تذكير في 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 ذكر هذه النيه هل هو مجرد يعني تدريب يعني احاول ثم احاول ثم احاول هذا 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 واحد والثاني انه من من اول النهار ينوي هذه النيه انه سوف يكون مبتسما وباشا في جميع في عموم خلق الله فهذه النيه يعني تجزئه ولكن الـ يعني الـ الـ يعني الاولى عند بكل عند كل ابتسامه مثلا او عند كل بشاشه او عند كل لقاء لكن ان لم يستطع ذلك فال تسعه النيه في اول النهار he said that um, it is yes it's a matter of practice and so you practice practice and you get better and he said that you can also at the beginning of the day make an intention that i will smile and be cheerful at other people in order to follow the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and this single intention at the beginning of the day will suffice you for intending at during the rest of the day but it's better to have a separate intention in addition to that every time you smile and with that uh, practicing he says will will uh, will help you realize that na'udu ila nasiha walaw yani kanat min ila rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam انظر الى السيده ام سلمه رضي الله عنها يعني قد لا لا يحفظ من سيرتها الا هذا الموقف عندما يعني امر رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم بان يحلق الصحابه فلم يحلقوا فدخل يعني يعني في وجهه شيء من العتب وكانه قال يعني يعني انهم يعني ان لم يفعلوا هلكوا او كذا او كما قال عليه الصلاه والسلام لكن انظر الى نصيحه السيده ام سلمه رضي الله عنها قال يا رسول الله يحبوك فلو خرجت اليهم وحلقت انت لفعلوا فخرج رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم واخذ بنصيحتها هذا الـ الـ يعني الـ الاعلى ياخذ من الادنى مو شرط دائما الناصح يكون هو الاعلى فخرج رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم الى الصحابه وحلق امامهم فتساروا الى ان كادوا ان يجرحوا بعضهم بعضا بمسارعتهم لامتثال امر رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لامتثال فعل رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم he said we'll return to the topic of uh, of nasiha and he said what comes to his mind is uh, sayyida um salama one of the wives of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said that 
uh, after Hudaybiyah, after the Treaty of Hudaybiyah, when the companions, they went with the Prophet wasallam to do pilgrimage at Mecca and they were blocked uh, in humiliating, in a humiliating way. The, uh, the, the Prophet وسلم, he told them to slaughter their sheep and release themselves from pilgrim sanctity and that they weren't going to do Umrah. And the companions refused or because they were shocked. They said, how can we uh, accept such humiliating terms? We've won the Battle of Badr, we've won these battles, we've all these things and, we, and we, we've been, uh, we're being blocked and, and Quraysh is doing something that is wrong. And the Prophet وسلم, he returns to his wife Umm Salama and he was disappointed because his companions weren't uh, weren't uh, doing what what he had told them to do. And she said to him, uh, she gave him nasiha. She said to him that uh, they love you. Said you go and shave your head and release yourself from ihram, and everybody else will do the same. So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he accepted her nasiha. This is another example of accepting nasiha from somebody who is beneath one. And he went and he shaved his head and the companions when they shot, saw that, they raced with each other to, uh, to do the same. Aaudatan ila su'al al-akhir. Rubbama yakun huwa qala wajhuhu huwa bil-asl mubtasim. Fa kayfa yuzhir niya huna wa huwa taliq al-wajh. هكذا كأني فهمت منه نقول له طلاقة الوجه هو يرافقها لين الكلام فإن كان وجهك طلقا لكن عند الكلام هنا يعني تساعدك النية في ذلك أن يكون كلامك لينا فإذا كان مظهرك مبتسما خلقة ولا يعني تأتي بالنية هنا لكن عندما تتكلم تلين الكلام وتدخل النية هنا He said that uh, returning to, to the last question about smiling said he understood from the question that the questioner he is naturally a cheerful person and likes to smile at everybody so he said that that this is a um, he said that what you can do is in that case is that you intend when you meet somebody you naturally smile at them but when you speak you you make a conscious effort to speak gently to make your words more gentle and kind um, and so the intention will enter into into over there at that point. <laughs> والرجل عنده يعني التزام يعني في مظهره فطلب من من العامل الذي عنده في المحل طلب منه أمرا فقال له أعطني كذا وكذا كرما لا أمرا عجبتني هذه الكلمة كثير يخاطب عامله يقول له أعطني أشياء الفلاني كرما لا أمرا يعني أصبحت أستخدم هذه الكلمة أحببتها أصبحت أستخدمها سبحان الله يعني أحيانا يوفق الإنسان لي يعني لكلام راقي جدا يعني هو مسؤول صاحب محل والعامل دونه بكثير يقول له أعطيني الأمر الفلاني كرما لا أمرا فأخذتها من يعني منهجا في عندما أطلب من أحد شيء أقول له كرما لا أمرا He once entered um, he came, went to a vegetable shop a fruit, a fruit seller a grocer and he went and he was a religious man and so the, the shopkeeper he had an employee who used to work and put the fruit here and put them away there and so he said that he turns to his employee and he said, give me that, give me such and such a thing. And then he said, give me such and such a thing out of your generosity because, because, because you're generous, not because I'm commanding you to. So uh, when Sita Muni he said he heard that, he said he liked that expression. And he learned it and he began using it with other people. And so he said that when he asks somebody to do something, he asks them, you know, learning it from this person, gentle words, an example of gentle words, 
that can you do this for me out of your generosity, not uh, because I'm commanding you to. Subhanallah, al-hikmatu dhalatu al-mu'min. Aina ma wajadaha, iltaqataha. That wisdom is the lost uh, property of a believer. Wherever he finds it, he picks it up. He said that so our uh, so our nasiha to ourselves is that we take a brother um, uh, who is uh, who and our relationship with that person is for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and we use that person to to improve ourselves. And we take a, an oath from him. We say that if you see something wrong, then tell me so that I can uh, correct myself. والله لسنا لسنا أهلا لذلك أبدا والله لكن نرجو الله أن ينفعنا بما نسمع. So he's not uh, qualified to uh, to say any of the things that he's saying, but he hopes that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala benefits us all and benefits him through what he hears. وهذا لا يقال على سبيل التواضع لأنه يكون هذا كبر كمان. وطالبي الحق أن ينفحنا ببركتهم نفحة تصلح لنا يصلح لنا بها أحوالنا. That he's not saying this out of humility. That to say this out of humility would be arrogance. But he's saying this uh, because he is because it is true and he sees it as being true. He said that he is uh, from the generality of the generality of the generality of the Muslims. And uh, and uh, and he sees this in himself, and he's conveying what's 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 the truth. And he asks Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to benefit him through those who are close to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and those who seek the truth. And um, and uh, and that. Uh, um, and yes. <laughs> يعني علنا أن تكون سرا لأنه يقول من نصحني فليسر بيني وبينه في النصيحة وإلا تكون فضيحة فالنصيحة تحتاج إلى إسرار وإلى ملاطفة. So that, that was one thing that we uh, that we neglected in Nasiha, and that is that when one gives advice to somebody, then it should be done uh, secretly, and one shouldn't uh, uh, announce it openly to the whole world. And uh, so, nas- giving Nasiha requires uh, privacy. And it requires gentleness.
تذكرت يعني بعض المواقف لسيدنا الشيخ عبد الرحمن يعني انا اعتبر يعني بين يديه في ذلك الوقت أص... يعني سني سن اصغر اولاده يعني يقول سيدي ما رايكم في كذا شو شو يعني ماذا ماذا يعطي هذا يعني يعتبر سني من كاصغر اولاده رضي الله عنه ثم يقول لك سيدي ما رايك في بينك وبينه يقول سيدي ما رايك في الامر الفلاني يعني هذا من جن... من 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 طرفه عبودية حقة لأنه قد يخرج كلام على من 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 هو دونه بكثير وكذا وكذا وكم يرفع كمان هذا من من همة ال ال من وجه إليه هذا وهذا منهج نبوي أشير عليه شوف في حرب في غزوة الخندق من المشير على الرسول عليه الصلاة والسلام في الخندق سيدنا سلمان أليس كذلك نعم يعني رضي الله عنهم الشيوخ رضي الله عنهم يعني يعني هم وراث محمديون أخذوا وراثة النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في جميع أحوالهم وتصرفاتهم وكذا وكذا سبحان الله كلما كان يأخذ من هذا المنبع وله الإرث الأوفر منه كان يعني صاحب وراثة محمدية That he remembers this talking about Nasiha brings brings to mind brings to his mind the many times when Sheikh Abdul Rahman asked him turned to him and asked him my he said to him Sidi my master what uh, what what is what is your opinion on such and such I think and he says that that the age difference between him and Sheikh Abdul Rahman was like He, he was he was like the youngest of Sheikh Abdul Rahman's sons, like like his baby his baby child, and he was beneath him in degrees, and yet he would turn to him, refer to him as my master, and he would ask and he would seek his advice. Um, he said that this is uh, this is a this shows the humility of Sayyid, uh, Sayyidina Sheikh Abdul Rahman, and also he says that it this is something that encourages the person whose advice is being sought. He said that the so he's speaking of himself that that when he went and he said this to him and Sheikh Abdul Rahman spoke to him this way it inspired him to uh, to follow him and and do as he said and be as he was um, and this is the uh, way of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam would take advice from his companions so at the Battle of Badr he said to, he said he he sought advice he said that. Uh, that uh, give me advice. In the battle of of, of Ahzab of the trench, he uh, he sought advice from his companions, and it was Sayyidina Salman al Farisi who was a foreigner. Uh, he wasn't even uh, he wasn't even an Arabian who gave him the advice to dig the ditch. Um, so uh, so this is a uh, so uh, taking the siha, having somebody as a mirror, is a um, is a. Uh, Trait of all of the all of the great uh, uh, sheikhs and teachers. Alhamdulillah, <laughs> Rabbil Alamin. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruk wa la tuubu ilayk. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wal Asr. Inna al-insan la fi khusr. Illa al-ladin aamanu wa amilu al-salihat. وتواصوا وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر وتواصوا أليس, أليس هذا من النصح؟ 
هذا ليس طرف لطرف فقط هو طرفين تواصوا من هو منك من من هو منك You cited that Surah Al-Asr, which the companions used to recite when they parted company. And in this uh, surah, the, it says that, uh, that uh, everybody is in loss except those who believe and do good deeds. And they enjoin each other. They enjoin one another to what is right. And this enjoining, he said, is mutual. It uh, it's, goes two ways. It's not from, just from one side to the other. Atamanna. أتمنى من كل من مثلا لنا صلة به أتمنى عليه أن يتخذ أخا له وهذا كان منهج النبوة أخا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم بين فلان وفلان بين فلان وفلان أن يتخذ أخا ويكون بينهما عهد أن أنك إذا رأيت في شيء أن تذكره لي ولا يكون هناك حاجزا عن ذلك أتمنى أن يكون هذا بيننا وبين كل من يعني حتى بين كل مسلم أن يكون يتخذ أخا صديقا يجعله يقوم نفسه من خلاله. And that he he wishes that everybody who has a connection with him through his teaching, that uh, uh, who wants to learn from him, that each and every one of us should take a brother uh, for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and we should all uh, take a covenant from that brother. And um, ask him to uh, to alert one of one's faults, and to tell one that um, um, that um, something is uh, whenever something wrong happens. هذا في من أراد النصح لنفسه، في من بالغ في النصح لنفسه أن يتخذ جميع البرايا مرايا. من أراد النصح لنفسه يتخذ مرآة مفهوم ومن بالغ في نصح نفسه فليتخذ البرايا مرايا يكون كل يكون كل عبد كل مخلوق مرآة له He said so this is somebody who um, has compassion for himself and wants the best for himself should take somebody who will uh, a brother for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who will uh, who will uh, Uh, apprised them uh, him of his faults said as for somebody so this is this is the minimum but if somebody wants to do go to um, uh, you know to do to go to great lengths to do this to do this really really well then they should take everybody in creation as a mirror mirror and in other words they 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 take everyone as a means to reflect on their own faults جاء سؤال سيدي بسم الله بسم الله so there's a question that came if your neighbor has a problem in his relationship with Allah he cannot see it as not following the deen how can one help them without making them feel that you are judging him إذا كان جارك عنده مشكلة في علاقته مع الله سبحانه وتعالى ولا يستطيع أن يرى أنه لا ليس يعني لا ليس متدينا مثلا فكيف نساعده من غير أن نشعره بأننا نحتقره أو نعم نعوذ بالله من احتقاره نعوذ بالله من احتقاره 
هذا يحتاج إلى شفقة يحتاج إلى أحسان يحتاج إلى هدية يحتاج إلى يحتاج يحتاج إلى هذا هذا بغيتك وهذه وهذا صيدك وهذا ما يجب أن تبحث عنه خصوصا أنه جارك He said that so I translating judging, judging him as having contempt for him because that's what when people say don't judge me, what are what do they really mean? They say don't, don't have contempt for me. Don't think that I am, uh, I don't, uh, I I'm low. Don't think yourself as better than me. So he says that 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 uh, we seek refuge in Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala from having contempt of anyone, and and uh, and we and the way that we show our neighbor that we aren't having contempt for for them is by uh, by treating them well by uh, sending them gifts by uh, uh, by uh, by being gentle with them by uh, by developing a relationship with them and he says that this uh, this is uh, this um, Uh, this neighbor of ours um, and to help them see this this is our this is what we seek this is what we seek after this is what this is our uh, goal and our desire and the thing that we gain from this life is by dealing with people in this way in order to help them see uh, see see these things without uh, having any contempt for them فالاحتقار ليس لشخصه الاحتقار للمعصية أحب الصالحين ولست منهم عسى أن أرجو بهم شفاعة وأكره من من بضاعته وأكره من بضاع ممن من بضاعته المعاصي ولو كنا سواء في البضاعة said that the uh, contempt is not for the person, but it's for, or the judgment, or the contempt is not for the person, but it's for the act of disobedience. And he cited the lines of Imam Shafi'i, lines of poetry. He said that I love the the righteous and I'm not one of them, uh, but I hope that by loving them, I will attain on the day of judgment to their intercession. And I dislike, I dislike, Uh, I dislike those acts of theirs that are acts of disobedience, even though uh, I am the same as 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 them in acts of disobedience. الذي كان يضع الأذى في طريق رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. ثم يوما لم يرى هذا الأذى فتفقده رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. وزاره لعدم وجود الأذى في الطريق كان سبب إسلامه. said the person who used to place thorns in the path of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and one day he didn't see thorns there and so he asked about him is he okay and he visited him found him sick and that was a reason why he became Muslim. يعني والله هذا يحتاج الى يعني والله اقول هذا هو يعني هذا هو عملك في جارك في من اساء اليك في من كذا ان لا تحتقره لكن احتقر المعصيه لا ما في مانع ان تحتقر المعصيه هذا مطلوب اما ان تحت شوف انظر الى اليه صلى الله عليه وسلم عندما قام للجنازه اليهودي شو هذا؟ فقيل له يا رسول الله هذا يهودي قال هذه روح تفلتت يعني وددت أن يعني كنت في هدايتها أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام يعني المهم يعني يعني جنازة يهودي قام عليه الصلاة والسلام وكأنه ذرفت عيناه وتأسف أنها لم تسلم هذه الشفقة والنصح كله النصيحة كلها أنا أرى نبعثها الشفقة 
على خلق الله. Bring to mind the example of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam when the funeral procession of a Jew was passing by and the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam stood up for it. Why did he stand up for it? Because he had compassion for this soul and he felt sorry and grieved that it hadn't become Muslim. He didn't have contempt for him when he died, even though he died as a non-Muslim. He said that the origin of all nasiha as he began is having a compassion for other people. قدم له الهدية لهذا لأخونا السائل يقدم لهذا الجار هدية يقدم له إحسانا يقدم له كلمة طيبة عسى أن تكون هي هي الرسول بينه وبين الإسلام وبينه وبين الالتزام. He said, give them a gift. Uh, and it may be that your gift giving will be a means for that person to become religious and and come back come to the religion of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So um, we should have uh, we will have um, if anybody else have any other questions, email them to me, and Sister uh, Tahmina. And I'll get you an answer, inshallah. So it's uh, and the other 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 questioner as well. So then we'll we'll stop here. It's going long for saving you. We'll continue all next week, inshallah. Jazakallah khairan. Salli wa sallim, Rabbi wa anaim, ala al-mu'allim.